It's Rizzy Light, man. I'm with Mikey T, the movie star, man. We turning up day and night. Respect Mikey T, respect me. Y'all already know the vibe. Rizzy Life, man. I appreciate you joining me today on the platform. You know, I know you've been grinding on the music scene for a number of years. So I wanted to invite you on the podcast to tell your story. Hey, thank you very much. Yo, Mikey T, much, much obliged, man, to be on here with you, man. I see you doing a lot of good things. I see a lot of interviews. Doing your thing. Keep doing your thing no matter what nobody say. I really appreciate that, man. And, you know, for for my audience, first of all, you know, for everyone who may or may not know, can you tell everyone where you were born and raised? I was born in the Bronx and raised in the Bronx. I was born on Fordham Road, man. And I, that's why I was raised at on Fordham Road. But I've been all around the whole New York and the world. But, but Bronx native, man, born on Fordham. That's what's up, man. You got to tell me a few stories about coming up from the Bronx. What neighborhood were you representing, man? Tell me uh, a little bit about it. Um, well, I'm from West Fordham University, 188th, 190. That's like 90 blocks. So that's like um Kingsbridge, 183rd, um, Lauren Place. It's it's a couple blocks around in that whole area, but we was on 188th in university. So a lot of people don't know that's like we grew up with every race. Like it wasn't just black and Puerto Ricans. It was whites, Puerto Ricans, Jamaicans, Cambodian, Chinese. So I had a whole bunch of different color friends and shit like that. We we was like, you know what I'm saying? We came up just like everywhere where it's grimy in every hood. So we came up through the ranks of, you know, Robin, this, grew up around murderers. Seeing murders at an early age, Bronx was like, it was really dusty back then. So a lot of that influenced us. You know, we came up through the ranks, man. Of, I guess if you want to call it the the um the, the whole criminal life, like as being young and being just being around so much things that we was influenced by and the people we was influenced by. So it rubbed us, it rubbed off on us. Like when I was coming up, it was good graffiti games. So we grew up around a lot of thorough like graffiti artists that was, you know, back then they was talking about colors, but you could get killed just for crossing somebody they about back then. So but um yeah, man, I seen a lot of things for a young kids, like murders at four. Like I, I kept seeing a lot of murders like I right out right outside my window. So crazy man how did you end up getting involved in music you know what was it that really motivated you to start doing it um just just listening to music and from listening to one then i had somebody that had a studio so you know I was, we would just freeze i would just freestyle and one one day i just got on the mic and somebody came out the room it was like Yo, I thought that was the radio. And I was like, nah. It was like, nah, that's that's Rizzy, that's real, that's real. So I just from right there, I took them. They was like, everybody was like, yo, you gotta keep doing this, you gotta keep doing it. So I just kept doing it. So can you tell me how you would go on to link up with D Block Latino? Are are you Latin? Nah, 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 nah. I'm just grew up in the Bronx, so I got all friends from all nationalities. So, you know, and plus I was like one of the main ones in the hood that was like really turn it up to be a youngster. One of the young youngsters that all the old heads looked at like, yo, he's a problem, you know? So, but um, yeah, man, from, so I met Chadi, Chadi and them, I, I like, I'm they OG. So they look up to me, Chadi, Yadi and them. That's, he got the D block stand, Chadi, Yadi and um, Harold, but they know him as PLF, Poppy Little Face. Who were some of the other artists that you worked with on D Block Latino? And can you tell uh, the people who that who don't really know about it a little bit about it? Because that's actually new to me. You know, I had no idea. You know, what exactly was D Block trying to do with D Block Latino? Um, see, D Block Latino, they had a, a whole different, like they had the whole reggae thong when the reggae thong started popping in the um. All that other, like the, the whole Spanish culture started popping. So um, 
they liked Harold and them. And they, Harold, Harold and Shadi, they be in the hood. Harold's from Preston. Shadi Yadi's from my block, one nine zero and Grand. So, um, basically what they was doing, they was getting a whole Latino hip hop scene. Like they was locking that that down. So Chadi had the stamp and they, they was doing their thing. They had their studio, they had their little click and they was really doing their thing. They got they got a lot of good music out and stuff like that. I don't know what they saying to the T, but <laughs> I know, you know, you could just hear it in the rhythm. I'm like, yo, Chadi, you know? And yeah, um, my, my, my guy L, so it's L, Chadi, um, PLF. And there's a couple other homies from 192 that they mess with from 192 to 190. My guy Ralph. So yeah, they all they all good money, man. So those were the first guys that you linked up with when you were starting to freestyle and get in the studio. Yeah, like so at, after that era, like when I I started, somebody tried to get me a deal. Well, you know, I just started, so I didn't really know what they was doing. So I was like, I ain't no fucking rapper, man. <laughs> like, so I just shut the whole deal down, and they was looking at me like, yo, what the fuck is wrong with you? Like, I ain't you know what I'm saying. That wasn't my, my, I had the skills, but I just didn't want to do it right then. So later on, I started picking up freestyling again, and I ended up in the studio with Shadi Yadi, and I just been in there bringing weed, taking my frustration out in the studio, me and Chadi recorded me just going hard every day, every day. Did you watch the J Hood interview with Math Hoffa in full? Oh, I ain't go. I ain't watched the whole thing, but I got you no. Know, everybody kept sending it to me because I'm linked to him, unfortunately, because I was there through the whole beginning of his ordeal with D Block. So I was there from right when it started. So. Every time something happened, everybody hit me up like, yo, 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 yo. I was even getting calls about, you know what I'm saying? Whatever happened when, when you said something to them. Anything that happened with them, they hit in my jack like, yo. I have to ask this question as well because, you know, I don't like certain labels getting pinned on me. So it would help me if you answered this question honestly. What made right. you want to do an interview with me? You know, what made you even want to do an interview with me? Because I just want to be clear. You know, I didn't really want to go out of my way to, you know, get everyone on my channel that doesn't like Jay Hood. So I'm just nah, curious, you know, like, why did you want to come on my platform? Like, why did you, you know, reach out to me to do the interview? Do you feel like you need to clear the air on any inaccuracies from that recent interview? And the reason I ask this is because I get a lot of backlash sometimes and people say, well, Mikey T, you're a clout chaser. Why are you interviewing J Hood's ops? You know, I'm a neutral guy. I'm a neutral journalist and I just want to make it clear. I didn't uh, come at you like, yo, let's bash J Hood. But at the same time, I'm going to give you an uncensored platform. That's exactly. the beauty of my platform. The audience can choose who they side with. So I just really wanted to put that out there. Now, I respect you for that. No, because not a lot of people is even trying to do that because they might feel, you know, anybody that know Jay Hood, they're a personal fan. He's very defensive if you give him advice. He's very, you know, he's like that. But in real life, he's not like that. And on top of that, I've been watching, you've been going around since the Tony Sunshine, you know, the AR app, free AR app, and your, your little whole thing you was going through, I seen you be, I seen the young dog, you be around, so I'm like, nah, Mikey T, he official, and then I heard what you were saying about her, I don't know what happened with you, I don't got nothing to do with that, but you was making a lot of valid points that people cannot just be like, yo, he not making sense. If they say that, then they sound like a hater because somebody that's listening with a biased ear be like, yo, that makes sense, man. It makes sense. No, I appreciate that, man. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate the fact that you know some of the work that I went out of my way to do. Nah, this ain't no game, man. This is this is real shit, man. You know? That's, that's just what it is. I respect your work. So I reached out to you like, all right, Mikey T saying he this. Let me see what's up with him. Not not just because you 
getting whatever y'all going through because you know Jalen for a long time. Y'all could patch up whatever, whatever. You know what I'm saying? So at the same way, you giving me to tell my side of the story, which he's telling people like, yo, I don't know him. Yo, um, nah, nah, we never did nothing together. Like he's trying to, he trying to blackball me. So it's like, I right, he telling people, they tell people I'm lying. So I'm like, oh, word. All right. I tried to show a little bit of respect to the situation because I had people hitting me up to talk about the issues that Jay Hood was going through uh, after the Math Hoffa interview. Like people were specifically asking me to interview them about it, but also they were asking me to come on their show and talk about it. And due to the fact that I had known Jay Hood prior to that, I thought the first thing I should do was get Jay Hood's response to everything. But you understand who do Jay Hood mess with that you know? Figure that one out. And that'll tell you his character. You know? Think about it. If he wasn't on Math Hoffa and everybody wasn't on him and you would have hollered at him, he would have been hit you. But since he feel like, oh, he already got, oh, oh, now it's fuck your life and all this disrespectful shit, like, bro, stop it, man. He could have just been like, yo, not right now. No, I'm sorry. I got you down the line, Mikey T. You was there for me. You met me on Kingsbridge and know what I'm saying? And did the interview with me inside the restaurant in the Capitol. That was on Kingsbridge. That was you, right? Yeah, uh, it was inside of that uh diner. Yeah, that yeah. Uh -huh. That's to. right there on Kingsbridge, man. That's yeah. my hug, right? That's my hug. Kingsbridge and Jerome. That's where you was at. In yeah, the and it's not like um you know what I mean? The interview was put right up on World Star. Literally, all the stuff we were doing was getting traction and shit like that. So I don't really get why he would come at me in that regard. So let's break down the whole story, man. All right. You said you met uh, Jay Hood at the D Block Studio. Was that the D Block Studio or the D Block Latino Studio? Could you take me into that? All right. That's the D Block Latino Studio. Um. You know, I, like I told you, I'll be freestyling. You know, I started writing, but I was at that time, I was just freestyling and smoking mad sour. I seen Jay Hood up there. You know, one day I was in there rapping. He over there. He, he chilling. He's sleeping on the couch or whatever. I do my session. I'm out of there. Then I'm, I'm always in a session for some reason. Now he's always over there. So I don't know what's going on. So, but I seen him one time on Fordham. But anyway, Long story short, we end up getting cool from me just being in the studio a lot. And, you know, he's, we smoking blunts and shit and just, you know, just chilling. I'm just doing music. They listening and shit. And niggas is just vibing like that. So how do you go from linking up with Jay Hood to actually becoming affiliated with him to the point where you guys were running around together? Um, From being in the studio smoking weed. So we, we smoking, we talking. So basically, you know how when you get some good, good weed, motherfuckers get emotional and start spilling all their guts and stuff. Excuse my French. So um, we talking and he started just pouring his heart out with the whole the D block story and just telling me how they doing them and what's going on in his life with D block and how he feel they like mistreating them and they not doing them good and he just basically he just down down talking them the whole time like. So it's like, I'm listening. And, you know, I'm a fan of the locks. You know, I mess with the locks, but don't mess with the locks. But um, I know what they went through with Puff. So everybody, we're not blind to what happened with the locks and Puff. We all was riding with them, free the locks. You remember that, right? Free the locks. So we was, we you know, SP wanted to throw the fridge on <laughs> On, on Diddy, they got on the phone. Diddy had to talk to them, like, yo, come to the office. It was real nasty. We felt like Big Dot, Mace, and we felt like they was getting done dirty. So everybody was riding with them. So when he's telling me that, it's like, I'm just looking at it like, what? They doing what to you? They, they doing, like, huh? Like, it was just a shock where he was just, he just kept saying. So I'm like, damn, bro. So from right there, he just started running with me because he's seen everybody from the community fuck with me. He, he know anything that go down on Fordham or whatever happening, he know everybody was running to me. 
people kept telling him, yo, that's Rizzy, that's Rizzy, that's Rizzy, that's Rizzy, that's Rizzy. So he knew who I was, and I know he was just rapping, but you know, I didn't even know his whole angle to this whole shit. So I thought it was just going to be, you wanted me to pay for a feature. You know how it is. They were, yo, you want to pay, you want to get on the track, and then it's, yo, I charge this much for a feature. But it never was nothing that. It, was, it wasn't that. It was just him telling me a lot of shit about the locks. I guess he seen the way I was moving. I had I was real strong out there. And just by myself, I was strong. So I don't know. He probably told that whole lock story to a million people. But to me, I took it a different type of way because that's how I am. Was Jay Hood working on Tales from the Hood when you met him? And nah. What um, was his affiliation really with D Block at that point in time? Um, he was still working on Tales from the Hood. Like he was like getting a whole bunch of tracks and like reference songs. And they was, I guess they were still good, but we like like the whole world didn't know what was going on. Just Jay Hood knew what was going on. I don't even know if D Block really knew that he had so much animosity built enough. You no. Know? They they didn't see that coming. So their relationship was good. And he was working on Tales from the Hood with a lot of um my my friends I grew up with, and they was making beats for him. And they was like, you know what I'm saying, rolling out the red carpet for him. He was good. But when he met me, that's when he started coming outside. He wasn't coming outside. When he met me, he was outside like he grew up in the hood. So he was good with me. So I want to ask, man, why did Jay Hood have to buy his own D block chain? Yo, he was he was broke, bro. He didn't want to. You gotta you gotta look at it. He was trying to. He made money, but he was buying that weed, hitting tellies, like tricking on girls, buying that bootleg clothes, and he he wasn't doing the right things with his money. And then trying to follow behind the locks where we know they ain't the, the richest group, but at that time they was making money and he's trying to do what they do. You know, that's not going to work. That's like Memphis Bleak running behind Jay-Z trying to keep up with him. It's not going to, you're going to end up broke. You're going to look stupid at the end of the day. And that's, that's just basically what I feel like he was just trying to, like, he just jumped the gun too fast. You know? You got the right to feel like you better than everybody. Nobody's saying like, you you got to tell yourself that if you really want to make it in this because there's a thousand people doing the same thing you're doing. You got to stand out. So I understand. But at the same time, he, I, I feel like he just committed suicide. I found it interesting that he said on Math Hoffa's show that he's the co-founder of D-Block. If you're the co-founder of D-Block, which Styles P had an issue with, why did he have to buy his own chain? Yo, <laughs> another thing you got to understand, the labels, they liked it, the idea of a J-Hood, but he wasn't pre presented right as far as him putting that work in. So if he would have put the work in, he would have got a chain. He wouldn't have had to go buy no fake chain. That's the whole thing. He would have never had to do that. So he said he bought the chain, 20000 That's what it was more like $200. So, and that co-founder, I understand what he's saying. It's like, you was there, but you didn't help with the name. You just was there looking and listening. That don't make you no goddamn co-founder. Because you listening and looking at and you're present. I don't understand that. That 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 was weird to me. I just feel like he want to keep the D block stamp and keep performing the old songs and have nobody run down on him for performing D block songs. Where I guess it was a reality check from when Style said, "You're not in D block no more. You're not no co-founder." And that was good for that was that was like clarity for him, you know? Because now you hear him saying more ODG. He should have just been running with that once he got kicked out of D block. I was there when I I told everybody he got kicked out of D block, but he kept saying it's rumors I got kicked out of D block, and 
And how could I get kicked out if I left or asked to leave the group? Like, I'm like, bro, you got kicked out. Like, you just don't know. Like, Luch called him in the studio, right? He said, I got a song for us, daddy. It's going to take us out of here. Now, what Luch don't know, I'm on the other side. And his face was just like with disgust. You know what I'm saying? He was like real hateful. And he said, I ain't getting on that shit. And right there, Luch, it was over. Luch called the of the studio phone ring. Charlie picked up. Luch told, like, who you fucking with? Him or us? They kicked J Hood ass out the studio. In your opinion, do you think J Hood was jealous because his album, Tales from the Hood, was shelved in order for Walk With Me to be released? That's what it was. He know that's what it is. Like, if you smart, like, I'm not calling nobody dumb just because they can't figure that out. But do the math, man. Like, he wanted that album to drop so bad, but he wasn't really putting the work and he just wanted it to drop. Like, he just wanted the money. Like, he wanted the money and, you know, that come with it, but wasn't really putting the effort and the time to sit in the studio and do his thing. They should have sent his ass out of town, somewhere quiet. <laughs> That's what they should have did. He was he was in the hood, running around on Creston, running running around with the homies, Yonkers, Mount Vernon. Know what I'm saying? All these things he was doing, except sitting in the studio, listening to beats, taking this shit serious, like putting the craft to your crafting. Man, he wasn't. He didn't do that. And that's the difference between artists like Cassidy and people that actually had a chance to put an album out and work with people, whether they had help or not. They they took that time to sit their fucking ass down and put that working at a certain time. So he can't be mad. They threw that tells from the hood in the garbage. Fools. That album got that album got thrown in the garbage. And you know people from D Block. Ask them, did Pooh's throw towels from the hood in the garbage? When did you notice the tension built up so much that Jay Hood was starting to hate on them? Not only to you in private, but he's like ready to go at them publicly. I'm going to tell you where. Because right after um, I told you about the D-Block Latino studio where Luch called him, he went right to the internet place and started writing a letter. But Luke already kicked him out. So he writing this, this big letter talking about how he want to be released from the label. Bro, you just got kicked out. It's over. You cannot quit your job if the boss just fired you. How you going to quit if you just got fired? So that's when I was like, what the hell is going on? Because when they throw him out the studio, he looked like he was going to cry. So I'm like, yo, bro, this is my whole hood. You good. And my house is over there. You good, bro. Don't worry about it. I got you. I took him under the wing. So from right there, that's when, you know, everything they everything started heating up. And um, I, I guess the rumor went around that he got robbed and stripped in the Bronx and all that. Which you actually said wasn't true. No, nah, it wasn't true. He was with me. I stopped it from happening. It was going to happen, but I stopped it. Jay hood was on Math Hopper's show and said he didn't want to drag the D-Block chain, but one of his homies gassed him up to do it. Do you know which one of his homies that he's referring to that gassed yeah, him up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was him. Because <laughs> he already said he was going to drag it before we got there. That was the plan was to drag it, bro. So he, he capping. And I'm going to tell you why he capping. Because in the video, you see me right there. I got the brown and white. I might rap about holes, might talk about ice. You could take it. So I'm walking on the side. Now he's walking, and the homie looked back at him to remind him, yo, drag it, like you said. He just reminded him on something he said he was going to. So if you look at Bag's eyes when he looked back, and he's like, you know how we walk this shit like a dog? So put Remember what he said he was going to do, and he did it. Yeah, can you tell me about that day, man? Uh, you guys actually went to the 50 Cent show that same day? Um, Yeah, that was the same day. So 
we dragged the chain and then we went back down the block to go mess with 50 Cent. But I felt like we all could have got in, but he just he just keep himself around a certain amount of dudes. Mind you, we the ones that's knocking heads off, but every time he got like a point in meeting, he got these certain amount of yes boys that he'll go with. People that's not really doing nothing. People that's not really going, you know what I'm saying? Say how they feel if it's a situation. So so he can have control of that. So me and the homies like, fuck 50 sitting on the fuck. We felt that. So he was, remember he said that, he was like, oh, the homies couldn't get in. No, you didn't want the homies to get in. That's the funny shit. True story. So that was actually at the meeting or at the nightclub? Because no, that was that was right after we dragged the chain and we went down the block. That was that, that was right there. That was the X bar. You no, know, oh, Jimmy's shit. Cafe. That's my hood. That was on right there on near the Deegan Expressway on on Fordham. So he literally had you all like literally on World Star, dragging the chain. But then he's not bringing y'all on stage with Fifty Cent and exactly. shit. He not he not trying to exactly anybody even the meetings. Now he's bringing the same yes men. Know what I'm saying? People that he could probably like sticks his men, like he could yell at and shit like that. Like people like no, they ain't got no heart. They ain't got no they ain't got no soul. They just they just did. No. You know, Jay Hood allegedly told 50 Cent he wanted to Ja Rule Sheik Looch. How do you feel about that? Uh, did Jay Hood tell you that? And what was your no, response no, no, to Jay no. Hood? Um, he got a song where he could do it. Now, I'm not saying that Looch comeback wouldn't be the mix up in some, some good boot eight. You know what I'm saying? It'll be some funny things to hear. But the things he said about Luke inside that song that he's scared to release, he don't want to release it because he know Luke is going to pop up on him. He was scared to release it. Every time you ask him to release it, his eyes go like this. So I'm like, it's it's out. A lot, he let a lot of people hear it. it. It's called Whatever You Want. He was talking about everything, like, He's talking about a lot of you could hear the hate. You could hear it. He was actually scared to release the diss song. Yeah. He don't want to release it. If you ask him about it right now, he's not gonna want to release it. Matter of fact, as soon as people say, Do you know Rick? He'll block you. <laughs> He'll block you dumb fast. Like, boom. Oh, block. I see it. I see it on his YouTube page. I see the tactics he uses when you know dealing with people. Um how did you guys, uh, how did 50 Cent end up reaching out to Jay Hood? Was it all over the beef? Nah, he he had somebody that was um, that was connected with 50 Cent to set up the meeting, being that he had this whole plan on what he was going to do to D-Block, and like he felt everybody was going to be on that, you know, destroying D-Block train. But it didn't go that way. We the things we thought of and how it was gonna go, it didn't work. I made up all of that shit. D flop, Jada Piss, Styles, Sweet, Stinking Shitty Loot, Sean Stinking Shitty Looch. That was I made up all of that shit. Even the name of the mixtape, Judgment Day. I told them I was like, yo, because uh, they said something about us on the radio. So I'm like, oh word. And then Luch was, Luch was talking, so I'm like, man, uh, so I'm, we just, I'm just going ham on them. I'm doing the Jada Piss voice and all that. I'm doing, you know, I was going, I was going, yo, you got to get flavors. Yo, shout out. Yo. And so, so people wanted to know, like, yo, who the hell is doing that voice? Yo, Mikey G, the greatest YouTuber on the planet, man. We gonna get flavors with it, yo. So, niggas was just basically clowning them and shit. We went at it another way, and we was just hitting them. But I didn't really have nothing to say about them, is I didn't really have no smoke with them, other than what he said about the hundred and twenty thousand dollars that was missing on his budget, not sixty. So 
That's why we was ready to, it was whatever. Like, what? Six, 120, what you said, 120,000 or 150, he said. And if you listen to the song, yeah, he got man down. I'm doing, I'm talking about them on that same song. And he said it, 150 missing on my budget. No producers got paid, which means niggas cuffed it. We had two deals. One was one one was universal. He said, I think he said one was universal. She dropped his walk with me's very first commercial. He said, if you listen to that shit, he just said the same shit. 150 missing out my budget. No producers got paid, which means niggas cuffed it. So when he first told me they took that money out of his bank account, he said it was a hundred and something thousand. So why now you saying 60, bro? And then he was acting like that chain was real. And then this shit is fake. So I'm like, what the fuck is going on, bro? And I wasn't even trying to look at it. Like we got, man, we had mad jewelry, whether we bought it or we snatched it or we beat somebody up for their shit. We know what jewelry looked like. We wasn't looking at his shit to be like, nah, homie, look what the fuck is that? Like, we wasn't like, you know what I'm saying? We we already passed that stage. He got a chain on, who cares? How much it costs? 20,000, who gives a fuck? We getting money. That shit ain't nothing to us, so we not really paying attention to the fool gazy, stupid ass chain he got on that everybody wanted him for and, and Hitters is calling my phone up for that shit and all types of stupid shit, but nobody know it's fake. How did the meeting with 50 Cent go? Did he say anything was going to good come out of it? Uh, I know ODG would end up linking a deal with E1, but did anything come out of this meeting with 50 Cent from Jay Hood? I'm going to tell you what came out of it, Mikey T. And this ain't, I don't give a fuck what people saying. I'm giving y'all what it is, and this is what it is. I'm not sugarcoating it. He, when he took the square fuckers over there that's not beefing, actually beefing with D Block, he took one guy over there that's mutual friends with D Block, that's telling them everything he's doing. He's a fucking idiot, bro. But he goes over there, 50 tell him he shouldn't do this, he shouldn't do that. He used to be J Hood. He know what it's like to be J Hood. Because he used to be J Hood. So he's telling him, yo, either you could do a joint venture with your homies that's, that you got right now that's dissing, that y'all going at them, or that y'all ODG. So that's mainly me, bags, and sticks. He's telling him, yo, I cannot give you a deal. I'm not trying to get sued. But what I can do is give you a group deal, and then they can't sue me because you are in a group a joint venture. I don't really know how it worked. I just rap, nigga. <laughs> so he took that with the with the papers for them to sign so he could get released. You know, his release paper, whatever these contracts he got with 50 or his lawyer, and he needed Sheik Luch to sign the papers. So what we do, we grab a blick. Now, Look, he dropped the squares off, come back to the real ones and with the papers, and we fly over there with the blick, and we go to the D-Block studio. So that actually leads me right into my next question. Can you okay. tell me about trying to get J-Hood released from D-Block? Y'all actually pulled up on Sheik Looch with that, with paperwork from 50 Cent? Man... It was either the paperwork 50 gave him or the paperwork from the lawyer, but it had to be some 50 cent lawyer paperwork. <laughs> it came out of nowhere like the magic paper. All of a sudden he had this paper, you know? So he tell, I'm intelligent. So he's like, yo, he said, either I could do the joint venture because he can't just sign me like that. He'll get sued. So I could do the joint venture or I got to get off of this contract. He was only on a two year contract. So we actually had a two-year contract at that point in time. So yeah. how did the whole thing go down? Did she? Because this reminds me of when Mace actually pulled up on Diddy when he was at a radio interview to get his release. Yeah, but Mace, you got Mace's. 
the hardest mix was when he was cleaning um Cameron sneakers. We we was really turning and smoking shit up up and down. So when this shit happened, we had the papers and we had the blip. And that was it. And we pulled up to the studio. So when we pull up to the studio, we see Big Mike. So when we see Big Mike, we like, yo, who's upstairs? And he said, Luchin Bully. And we was like, yo, call him right now and tell him we coming upstairs and we got the papers. And he told them right in front of us, like, yo, Jay Hood down here. We say you got the papers, they they coming upstairs. So we came upstairs. So we waiting, nobody opened the door. So I started kicking that shit. I'm kicking the door all crazy, like big ass still great door and shit, dusty ass door. I'm like, they never came out though. That's the whole shit. So they, we got up out of there. I ain't felt like the cops was going to come or nothing, but they wasn't coming out. So I'm like, we got to spin. Do you remember if Jay Hood was dropped from D Block or if he left willingly? No, he got kicked out from his big mouth. When he told Luch, I'm not getting on that song. And um, the song was Good Love. I was right there when Luch called him. He said, I got a song for us, daddy. He's going to take us out of here. And he said, I'm not getting on that shit. And then Luch hung up, spoke to Chadi. Chadi said, you got to go. And that's when I took him under the wing. And that's when the rumor came out. Yo, J-Hood got kicked out of D-Block. Luch kicked him out right there when he knew he was in the Bronx, in front of the homies, in front of his artists, his, his D-Block Latino artists and said, I'm not getting on that shit. Cause he was, whatever he was, I guess he was mad cause Luch is coming out with another album and got the nerve to ask him, do you want to get on this song? It's going to take you out of here. But he didn't understand that Luch was going to put him on that song. And that probably was his meal ticket. And he fucking, he, 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 he disrespected him. So it's like he disrespected his career. Never bite the hand that feeds you, man. I wanted to ask you, there was a rumor going around that Sheik Looch had thrown Jay hood out of the studio at one point. Do you know anything about that? And what did Jay hood do that resulted in getting thrown out of the studio? Did, did that even happen? See, now, I probably wasn't there for that time when he threw him out the studio, but I told you that call he made, he got him kicked out of the D Black Latino studio. With that, because once um he called Hood, Hood said no, Chotty phone rang, and he got him kicked out of that studio. <laughs> so it's, it's like he, he told me all them stories that he said, he told me them shits with different twists. When you say kicked out, were they just like, Jay Hood, you're not wanted here anymore? Jay Hood, you got to take off. Or hey, you gotta way. go, homie. You gotta go. You gotta go. Yo, you gotta go. With the head shaking, you gotta go. You gotta go. He disrespectful. And that all pretty much was all to do with that record that you were talking about when Sheik Luch called him like, yo, this is the one. That, and you know what record, the next record that came out? Good love, and it's like that theme. That was the next record that came out. You know, there's also rumors that J Hood got the D Block chain confiscated or snatched yeah. from him. Is there any truth to that? Yeah, it's truth to that. I got his chain. I got it hanging up, and the project on the wall. It's fake too. So authorities they ain't gonna arrest you for something that's fake. It's made out of spoons, just like they said on. Raping you, raping you records. It's fake, bro. He know I got it, he know. He, and he know where it's at, too. He know. He called me up, we spoke about it. You know. it. It was plenty days. 
his life was on the line or my life was on the line for that big ass chain. So, but I wanted to ask you, did you view J hood going on stage with 50 cent as an extreme clout chasing move? Oh, um, not really. I felt, I felt that it was like some real, some backstabbing shit. And it was like some real art of war beef shit. Like it was, it was real to me because at, at that time, if we would have seen Kiss, Kiss would have got smoked. Styles would have got smoked. You never know. We could have got, it could have went either way, but it would have been over Jay Hood animosity of him not, you know, growing as an artist or putting an album out or the, he felt like they didn't give him a fair chance. So it was like, I'm taking on the wall. So he he was really going to sign with 50 Cent. So don't let him pump that narrative that he was not going to sign with G-Unit because he would have been J-Hood Unit. That would have been that. that would, if he wasn't going to do that, why would we be kicking doors, swinging rat? Like, think about it. He was going to sign with him. But he wouldn't take the joint venture deal. Because then it's it's like now you got like three three rappers you gotta rap against me Dags and Sticks and him, so that, he didn't want to do that. He wanted just off that deal. He just uh, so we was riding with him whatever decision he made whether we was gonna take that route or just try to strong arm him and get you off of the shit. Okay, that's interesting to hear. That's how the uh, G Unit deal ended up wrapping up, and then uh, Jake, because J Hood had a buzz at that point. Everything of his was going on World Star, but then they started to disrespect J Hood on World Star. It seemed. Do you remember J Hood laundry room video, J Hood basement video, J Hood bathroom video, J Hood no. backyard video? Yeah, they, they was killing us. I ain't gonna lie, because in our mind, we thought, yo, we got them by the nut. We about to just, just finish them. All this stuff, J-Hood know about them. We about to bring this to everybody's attention. J-Hood saying these dudes are really not like that. And they just rap and all that other shit. These dudes is lame on. Listen, we, we about to just go 1090 on them, full speed, hit the speed bumps, everything just just go all out on them. They not like that. They burned it out. Like the way he made it seem like these dudes just, just don't be putting no work in at all. Like, so it was like the way he felt like they just not like that. So he could just say what he want, do what he want. And, and that was just it. So it, I guess he said he's seen so much of how they move that they not like that. So I guess his disrespect for them was, it was out of this world. You know, Rizzy, a lot of people might not know, but you were featured on the song called Double Wood, where J Hood <laughs> is dissing D Block. Um, how did that come about? Tell us more about it. Um, that that came when um I told you after Luch went on um Hot 97, he said J Hood and, and them dudes from the Bronx he rolled away, they ain't like that. He just got stripped and dragged in the Bronx. So we was all mad because, you know. They was using the tactics of going to the radio station, using the TV, using the magazine, but they didn't know nothing about the internet. So we was tearing them up on the internet and people on the streets kept asking them, yo, y'all hear what they saying? They like, they not on the radio, they not on TV. How we gonna hear them? They like the internet, man, they are killing y'all. And they finally figured out that that internet was a big tool. So, at that time, they, the internet just caught them off guard. So we went to the studio in Yonkers, right down the block from where they be at. We recorded it and we put it out. And those was all my homies that we did that on my block. So yeah, he was good. He was good money. J Hood said, out with the old, in with the new. They ain't want to pass the torch. So I'm going to make it do what it do. You know, J-Hood said they didn't want to pass the torch. 
Now, right. do you think J Hood? Do you think if J Hood had remained loyal and simply waited his turn without questioning the sequence and order, and simply remained loyal, that J Hood would have got his turn? Everybody would have got their turn, man. He would have made them more money if he would have just waited a little while longer. You already went through it all already. It was just at a time that things was really changing, like the YouTube, and he's running around, no car, jumping out of cabs, sneakers beat the fuck up, smelling like butt, underarms, elbow, nuts, and bad breath. So it was like he was at a bad space then for somebody to run up like, oh, you Jay Hood? Oh, my God. Like, what are they doing to you? So you got to understand, he felt like he couldn't live with himself the way he was living. And then to be representing D Block and everybody felt like they this and that. And then he's like, yeah, they this and that. I could barely buy a pair of drawers without being broke. You know, so he had that real animosity, but he wasn't really, that was the, he was living in the studio in there, but he never had no money to really, like, help the guys out pay rent. That's a studio. Like, you're going to have to pay them so they can keep the house running so you could work on your stuff. So if he didn't have no money to work on nothing and they doing everything off the strength because he's not paying them, that means when a paying artist come, he got to sit back and be like this. Because they got to get paid. So most of the time, that was me with mad money. <laughs> so I might have been up there freestyling. And he looking like, what is this motherfucker saying, man? This nigga up here got all his money and weed freestyling. I'm trying to get my life together. And I got to wait for this motherfucker. And he keep taking seven, eight hours making 20 songs. What the fuck is going on? So that's how me and him got cool and shit. Do you believe that D Block had some sinister plan to not let J Hood outshine them because they were intimidated by J Hood's skills? Hell no. Nah. You could say like, damn, like you could actually say like that's Hood and he's representing us, but like you got to be the one to do that. Nobody could be like, nah, 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 nah. If you with certain artists, you got to make a an impact. Like he did with Stack Bundles. Just Stack Bundles made more of an impact. Stack Bundles made that track with Jay Hood, the last one, in the D-Black Latino studio. And Chadi Adi came downstairs. He said, yo, Stack Bundles just smoked Jay Hood. <laughs> I'm like... I'm like, what? He was like, yo, he just smoked them on the track. I'm like, oh, I got to hear this shit. I seen Stacks and shit said, what's up? Niggas left, and I, he let me hear the track. I'm like, oh, shit. Stacks made an impact on that track. So you got to really get with these major artists and stand out, too. So you say you're the best, you want to be the best, but when it's time to prove it, you got to be the best, man. That's, that's like, no-brainer. You got to... You you got to show and prove. You got to really prove that you want this shit. So Stack Bundles, I mean, being that Jay Hood was the new guy with the locks, Stack Bundles wanted to go in the studio and get on the track with him. Nah, he did it too. He did it. But that's a lot of the times why an artist like that will want to jump on a track. You know, Stack Bundles was calling out all types of artists with his records, you know what I mean? Refer referencing G unit tracks, Diddy tracks, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? So to go in there and jump on a record with somebody in the locks and outshine him, it's gonna make a statement. But I know all, all together without the advice, it, it was a good track. You know what I'm saying? It's just that stack bundles just said some shit. You know? Just stood out a little more. And then you got everybody that, you know, they're gonna say, nah, but Jay Hood's did his thing better than Stacks, but the majority of people gonna be like, yo, Stack Bundle smoked them, and it is what it is, you know? It happens, it happens, you know? What happened when Styles P pulled up on your block in the Bronx, Rizzy? Oh, yeah, he pulled out, he said, where that bitch ass nigga Jay Hood at? And he bought a sandwich, and he got the hell up out of there. <laughs> 
But I think, I, if I'm not mistaken, he was Dolo. You know what I'm saying? Everybody was surprised, like, oh, style. Because, you know, I had Hood on the aqueduct a lot of times, like in the Bronx. So he pulled up exactly where we be at, you know, and was asking where was Jay Hood at. Because he must have just heard that we went to the studio. We was at the parking lot. So Styles was like, yo, this is getting out of hand. Like, he was like, who is this? But we wasn't even out there that night. You know, I was sleeping. I had my strap right by my side. It, it would have been nasty. I fell asleep that night, and I woke up to like a thousand calls. SP was in the hood looking for Jay Hood. So, yeah, that shit was crazy. Yeah, but I respect Styles for that, man. But, you know, Styles got his ways, too. Everybody got their ways, you know. You know. Why do you think it was that Jay Hood had a problem, like, specifically with Sheik Looch? Or uh, what was it he used to call him? Cheap Looch? Is that what Jay <laughs> yeah, Hood is referred to him as? I don't think he like, would say much negative about Styles P. Nah, he just wanted to leave Styles and Jada out of it, but he knew that was impossible. Like, he thought, like, it was so much heat that they would think, like, yo, we better stay out of that shit because this is nasty right now. But they still, you know, held Luch down like they supposed to. It got ugly. They held him down. And, you know, that's Luch label. That's not their label. Remember, he said he was a co-founder, right? But he know who the real co-founder is. He know who the owner is. So that's why he got so much animosity towards Luch because he's putting out albums. He owned the label. And he like, yo, you could just put my album out. You own the label. Like, what are you doing? That tells from the hood is just sitting there collecting dust. And all the artists are even not rapping no more or they're not popping or no, it's just, it's over with that. Like that tells from the hood didn't even have a real tell from the hood on there. That's the thing. You could, you could ask them to name the list. It wasn't no, no song called tells from the hood because he, he don't be in the hood. J hood was the finger waves and the, um, color contacts kid with the nerds and stuff. He don't know nothing about the hood. His last name is Hood. And I could verify that that because I had him in the hood and hood situations happened and he didn't react like a hood person would react. You know what I'm saying? So he more of an instigator and you know, something happened to somebody, he'll be the one laughing instead of, you know, really acting. He's not hood like that. That's the funny thing. I'll tell you that straight up. He's a good kid. Well, he, he a grown man now, but he he's a good guy. He ain't no street guy. That's definitely, everybody could tell you that, that really know Jay Hood. Like, nah, he, he don't be having straps on him. And he don't be trying to, like, be tough. Only person I seen him get tough with is Sticks. And he be poking that kid out all the time, his right-hand man. I'm trying to figure this out, um, Rizzy. Once Jay Hood had the fallout with D Block, he formed the group with the acronym ODG. Were you a member of On the Grind, the group that Jay Hood was putting together? I was with the movement, but I was never like I had my own thing going on. So I always been like that. Like I like like if I've been a gangster, it ain't no sense like to join a gang. Like so he had his movement, and I was trying to help him with his movement. And I, would, I had my movement and my team that was helping them just trying to get in the door so we could get in the door. And we figured, like, yo, let's help the homie get in the door and maybe he will return the favor and help us get in the door. You know, one hand wash the other, both hands wash the face, that model, you know. What actually led to you falling out with Jay Hood? I It was a certain situation that happened with being Jay Hood to where... He tried to do, like, he tried to talk to my baby Bob's. I thought he was going to sugarcoat it. Like, he tried to get up my baby Bob. After everything I did for him was holding him down, he couldn't go to his house. When he was hiding, he was hiding in my house. When he didn't have money, I was feeding him. So when he tried some, like, grimy shit like that, like, and my baby mom's, like, was... Like, she said some slick shit to me, but not knowing. It wasn't for me. It was for him. And he knew what she did. So he, like, got real scared. 
And he was like, my mother said somebody going to die today. And he like ran out of my house like he seen 10 ghosts. So, yeah, it was like, it was, I'm like, but mind you, I got his chain and all that. <laughs> I'm like, listen, listen. He had called some homies like Dags, the ones you seen us with in the um, video when we was getting that deep block. He called them over like to get his stuff. And I was like, yo, um, I didn't know what was going on. So I'm like, hold up. That's funny that he ran out of here like that. I ain't giving him nothing. You know what I'm saying? Tell him to come holla at me. And then, you know, and then we could talk about why the fuck he ran out of here like he seen a ghost. So that was that. And I never seen him since. Everything else been on some him, him talking tough on the internet or get my number and try to talk tough. And then, you know, it was just certain situations. And I, I overlooked that. I was like, yo, homie, it is what it is. Don't worry about it. And we were still going to do something, but I had another interview and he wanted me to do the M rep and I couldn't do it. So he started talking spicy, like, yo, I seen you got an interview. Good luck with that shit. And I, 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 I. So I'm like, hold up. Now, look, I just forgave you over some crazy shit, but now you hitting my phone talking crazy. So now when I see you, I'm going to smoke you. So he was like, yo, all those conversations we had, I got, I was recording you. I'm like, oh, you recording me? What? All right. So, yo, bro, when I see you, it's up and smoking for you, bro. I'm going to slap your shape up off of you. So he talking tough. So ever since, it's been up, and I never really got to get up with him. So I'm not looking for him, but when I see him, I'm going to slap the shit out of him. I caught his man Sticks, and he was scared to death, but I know Sticks ain't like that. I'm not going to fight nobody that's not like that. That's how you know who's a gangster. Like, if somebody really don't want no smoke, you don't go ahead and start doing nothing to them. If you a gangster, you got to be a gangster always. You can't be mad because when you get mad, you stop thinking. So, you know what I'm saying? I don't take advantage of people because those would be the same people that could flip you. You never know. They scared. You don't mess with scared people. So, you know, I gave sticks a pass. Why do you think Jay hood is trying so hard to get that disloyalty stamp removed off of him this late in his career? Because he's hungry and he's seen every, everything we did and tried, it didn't work. So now he understands that you can't come aggressive. Look what happened when SP came aggressive. What they say, he's hating just because he's angry and hostile and he's showing his feelings. No, SP is fed up. No. So as so J Hood learned throughout the years, don't show no anger, no hostility, and just make people feel sorry for you. That's like me saying, yo, Mikey T, I love Mikey T, man, but he he a great guy and he do he do a lot of things for me, but he a bad guy. Like you see, that that don't make sense. Like you like, how is he all of these great things? But at the end of the day, he's a bad guy. Like, come on, bro. You know what you really want to say, but he don't really want to say it because he don't really want to say how he really feel because they know and he knows he's going to sound like a hater. And that's where he is. And that's basically it. He's seen everything they got. He's seen everything they do. He see how people look up to them like superheroes and believe all of these stories and how everybody got all this loyalty and all this. So all of that stuff is getting him mad. Like, I can't believe these dudes and I can't progress because they looking at me in the lights that I did to these guys and it's day four and I was telling the truth and nobody believed me and, and look what they doing to me, but I still love them even though they stole all my money and they sabotaged my career, but I still love them. Y'all can't blame me for not loving them because it's in my heart to love. Like, this, like, like that, that sappy shit. Like, who's not going to feel sorry for him like that? Come on. That's like when Jesus said, if they hit you on one side, you don't fight them. You offer them the other side. How the hell are you going to beat somebody up like that? You hit them on one side. He like, damn, bro, just hit me on the other side. You're going to be like, like, just get out of here, man. What's your thoughts on Styles P's response to Jay Hood's interview with Math Hoffa? Do no. you think Styles P brought up valid points 
about not charging for studio time and Jay Hood not being the co-founder of D-Block. Right. Because look at this, man. When people get a deal, Jay Hood is one of the only artists to make all of that money. Didn't he say he made over 90000 one time? Didn't he say he did this? He did that? He had promotional deals. He had sponsored deals. He got paid for this. They gave him that. They gave him this. He made all his money. He had 10000 in his house when his house burned down. Name an artist that never had a a single out or an album that that did all of that. Been around all of these artists from Mayweather to Stars and Fergie and rappers and A-list rappers, Jay-Z, Kanye, and don't got no single or no album out but had chances to like, you know, rub hands with all of these people and people wanted to sign him. Look, his deal, they asked him, Jay Hood, look, we about to take another deal. You could put your album out or you could or you could come with us. He said, I'm going to go with y'all. So who fault is it his album's run out? SP had a lot of valid points, bro. SP was not capping. It was just that he was so angry. He probably didn't want to do it. So he was just so mad that he was just really, he was talking angry, but he was really in his feelings, but he was saying the truth. And I know people just, only point they got was he angry because Jay Hood did a video and they let him shine light on the situation. But Jay Hood could have kept it, you know what I'm saying, a thousand and just been like, you know what, I had a situation with them guys and I moved on from that. So I really don't want to talk about it. So SP had a lot of valid points. You know what I'm saying? Everything he said was facts. He just was, he should have said it more calm. And how could you say it more calm when you already angry? So that's what, that was the whole point to that. One more of his points I wanted to address. Do you believe Styles P protected Jay Hood for three years? Listen, he was protecting him. I was protecting him. He wasn't even in Yonkers. He was hiding in my house. And if they did their homework, they know where he was at. So SP probably, we in the hood outside every day. So of course, SP probably getting calls like, yo, I seen him outside right there. I, 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 like, it is what it is. He's sneaking in his house five in the morning. We waiting for him, watching him sneaking in his house. Like, he hiding from the feds or some shit. You know what I'm saying? Then we get him, take him back to my house. Only time he was going to his house to get some clothes and get up out of there. He wasn't in Yonkers through that whole beef. Bags was in Yonkers going at it with them. You know what I'm saying? They caught SP lacking, and then SP caught them lacking. It was some big shit, and he's hiding while all this shit is going down. We getting mad calls. Yeah, that shit was smoking, man. That shit, a lot of people don't know. That shit was really smoking, man. That's nuts. I didn't realize the beef really got that serious. Yeah, it was basically... You know what I'm saying? We was pulling up over there. He kept bringing people over there that they never seen before. And they know probably how he is with his mouth through other people. So remember, he got a whole bunch of people and they drama. They supposed to be his brother's family. But you got a whole bunch of people that you don't know. They don't know. We could have been liable to do anything. We could have did something to Jay Hood. <laughs> we could have did to something to one of the deep black dudes. But we smart, you know what I'm saying? We not idiots. He had some intelligence, but we was willing to, you know what I'm saying? Whatever it was, it was going to happen. It was going to happen by the grace of God, you know? Is it true that Jay hood got so hot, things got so hot for Jay hood that he actually moved to Canada? Is that is that just a rumor? I mean, shout out to Canada. I'm just wondering if it's true. Mm -hmm. Nah, it's not that. I'm going to tell you what it is. He said he got hot, what it was. He was so broke because the 50 Cent dubbed him because they started like the New York Jim Jones got together because Max B dissed him. 50 Cent got with D Block because um the game was dissing him. G um D Block got with all of them because Jay Hood was dissing him. So now they formed like some alliance. So that just fucked Jay Hood shit up. 
Remember, he was mad at Jim Jones. He was mad at 50. <laughs> he was mad at all of them because they fucked this whole shit up. Now it was like a black ball chain effect. So he couldn't even do nothing. So he was angry as shit. Like, so the features dried up. He not a hustler. He not a boss. He can't take over a block and just show up on a block and start getting money. Like, look, man, I'm Jay Hood. Y'all better fall back. I'm getting money out here. Whoever pushing packs, they pushing them for me, right? <laughs> he ain't like that to be doing that. So he was starving, bro. He was living in a bandos, eating Doritos for dinner. Like, he was doing real bad. Like, he was living with one of my other homies. They had to throw him out. Then they had to drive him to North Carolina. He was living with his father. He was sleeping on his brother. He's a couch surfer, yo. He's on a couch tour. But I don't know if he is now, but he was on a couch tour for a long time. So he got couches all over the world right now. 